Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. If I was working with a client and I wanted to gain some insights, if I wanted to get some in, uh, some understandings of where they're held back, then the very first thing that I'd want to do is I'd want to have a look at their DISC report. So Safwan, congratulations, you're going to get some coaching today. And what I want to do is to use your report as an example of what I'd be doing to get immediate insights to where a client is held back. So very simple. First of all, you want to open up the DISC report and you want to have a look at both the natural and the adapted graphs. Remember, the natural graph is the real you. Remember, that's the real you. And the adapted graph is the mask. Now, this report, and specifically this page, is going to give you some wonderful insights to what the client's doing well and when there's any potential conflicts. These can be inner conflicts. They can be conflicts to do with them and somebody else. It can be a conflict to their current role or even the environment that they're trying to succeed in. Now, I want you to imagine, I don't know the client, I don't know their personal situation, I don't know what they've been up to for the past couple of weeks. All I want to do is to take a quick insight into their DISC report. Well, these are a couple of the things that I'd want to do. First of all, starting on the natural style, what I want to do is I want to quickly draw some lines. And these lines are going to represent the discrepancies or the variations from the natural to the adapted style. I want to have a look at what's going up. I want to have a look at what's going down as an example. So if you have a look here on graph number two on the natural style, what we can see here is there's a significant difference between the D style on the right and the D style on the left. So what you can see here, I've put a red arrow going from right to left. We can see here that the I style is fairly similar. There's really no movements there over 10 points. And then we can see a significant disparity between the S style natural and the S style adapted. So there's a lot of movement in there. And I've drawn another red arrow. We can see here that the C style remains consistent. So you can see that immediately. All you've got to do is look at their report and you can see these disparities from the graph on the right to the graph on the left. Now, once I do that, I want to do some calculations. So based on the natural style and the movement to the adapted style, it tells me that the D style on the right and the D style on the left has a disparity of 18 points. So I put minus 18 on the page here. Anything above 10 points, we really start to look at. Once, it's once it gets closer to scores like 20 points, this is going to cause the client significant amounts of stress because essentially they have to adapt. They have to put on a mask. They're trying to become somebody different in order to get a particular result. If I also do the calculations, the difference between the natural S and the adapted S is 25 points. Now, that's a significant difference. And you can see here, I've done the calculation and Safwan's putting a lot more energy into the S style on the adapted style. So he's putting 25 more points of energy into there. So what it tells me is there's going to be stress here. And I'll break it down and I'll tell you the other things that I'm looking for. So I can see that. Now, after I do that, I want to have a quick look. What is the speed? What is the pace that this client normally moves at? So I can see here, D-I-S-C, he's moving at a slow, slow and slow pace. So it tells me that overall, this client is going to move really slow. And even when they put on the mask, the adapted style, they're going to go slow slow and slow. So we automatically know that this is going to be a very slow moving individual. Now, that's not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. It's just different. And it either works for the individual or it doesn't. There's no value judgment. It either gets results or it doesn't. 
If it does, wonderful. If it doesn't, we're going to look at how we can adapt. And that comes in with the coaching. So let's continue. What I've done here is I've made a quick note here. The client is putting less energy into dominance. So when the mask goes on, when they're attempting to adapt for survival or success, or they're adapting because of the environment, they're going to put less energy into getting results. Instead of moving faster to get results, they're actually going to slow down. Instead of exploring risk, that D style is dropping down and they're going to spend less time exploring risk. So remember, the D style here is how you approach problems and challenges. And they're putting less energy into solving problems and challenges right now. When it comes to getting results, they're moving slower and they're not exploring risk. They're going to be avoiding risk. So there are a couple of quick assumptions that I'm going to make based on the score, based on where the energy is being put. Now, when we have a look up here, we're having a look at the S style adapted. Remember, the S style is all about the pace and the consistency in the environment. It's about getting into relationships. So what you can see here is that in this report here, from right to left, 25 points of energy is being put into this area. So the prospect's putting on a mask, they're adapting, and they're putting a lot more energy into trying to stabilize the environment. And we've got to explore what that is. So with the extra energy in here, it's not going to make this person move at a faster pace. It's going to slow them down. Remember, the S style, anything above the line, is already a slow moving style. But what you can see with 25 more points of energy over here, the client's going to slow right down. So there's more energy into trying to stabilize the environment. They're slowing down. And once again, this style is going to be looking for more stability. So we know that they're not exploring risk. They're trying to stabilize the pace of the environment. So these are just some mind reads. These are some assumptions that I'm making in my mind. I haven't spoken to the client. Safwan knows I haven't spoken to him. All I'm doing is looking at the report and trying to make sense of this. Once I make sense of this, then I can start to formulate some questions so I can discuss this with the prospect, so I can discuss it with the client and then truly figure out with fact, not opinion, but opinion and fact combined, what's happening with their life. So remember, I'm just looking at the report. I'm preparing for a conversation and this is exactly how I do it and you can do the same thing too. So. I can see there's less energy into the D style. They're slowing down. They're putting more energy into the S style and they're slowing down again. But then I start to have a look at some other calculations. So I'm looking at the disparity and the difference between the D style and the S style. And there's a significant disparity here. It's a 60 point gap. So what I can see here is that as the D style goes down, and the S style goes up, it's going to reinforce these characteristics. So what I do now is I go back. I go back to the descriptive box and I want to have a look at some potential keywords. So I'm looking at words here that describe how Safwan is going to approach problems and challenges. I'm going to have a look at some descriptive words of how he's attempting to approach the pace and the consistency in the environment. So what I've come up with here are two words, and I've just chosen these words based on what I've seen in the client in the past. So over here, I've cho chosen the word unobtrusive. So when it comes to approaching problems and challenges, the key word here is going to be unobtrusive. When it comes to the S style, and the way that he's attempting to stabilize the environment, I've chosen the word patient. And what happens here is these two words actually reinforce one another. 
So think about it. If someone was being unobtrusive when it came to solving problems and challenges and they were trying to stabilise the environment by being patient, then these two qualities actually reinforce and strengthen one another. Remember the point score here, the variation between the D and the S is 60. They're going in the opposite directions, but they both slow down. So if I was making a mind read, which is an educated guess, if I was making an assumption based on the information I have now, knowing full well that I haven't spoken to the client, then what I'd say is that when it's coming to get getting results, I'd have to say that the client is not asking for what they want. And what's happening is they're probably waiting for somebody to come and save them. They're probably waiting for somebody to come and give them the golden ticket. And they're really not taking action. So that's my mind read. That's my educated guess. This is just my assumption as I'm trying to figure out the client's model of the world. Are you with me so far? There's no facts at the moment other than what's in the report. I've got the facts here, but I'm only making assumptions until I get the facts from the client. But you've also got to prepare and you've got to run these scenarios through your mind. Let's continue. The other thing that I noticed here was that there's a significant disparity between the I style. I is for influence. It's how we interact with people and contacts. It's about getting recognition. And remember, we've already looked at the S style. It's about stabilizing. It's steadiness. It's about pace and consistency. Now, when you minus the 16 of the I style from the 83 score, you're going to have a 67 point disparity. There's a huge disparity here, which is going to actually reinforce these styles. Remember, the low I style is a slow moving style and the high S is a slow moving style. And because of this disparity 67, it's actually going to reinforce that. And it's going to tell me that this client's slowing down, they're slowing down, they're slowing down. And there's going to be reasons why. But at the moment, I'm just trying to formulate my questions. I'm trying to understand from the report what could be possibly happening in the prospect's life. Are you with me so far? Remember, we're in our vacuum. We've got our past history of other clients. We've got the science here in front of us. But we can only make mind reads at this time. Soon we'll confirm them. But at the moment, we're just trying to make sense. So what we do here, we want to have a look at the descriptors. What is one of the descriptive words for the low I and for the high S style? So once again, I'm coming back to have a look at the word sketch. So here, I'm going to choose the word patient. I believe that this client is probably very patient. In addition, I'm going to have a look at the I style and I'm going to just have to choose pessimistic based on my intuition based on my gut brain. Now, by the way, you've got three brains, a head brain, a heart brain, and a gut brain. Your head brain deals with logic and data. Your heart brain deals with values and feelings. And your gut brain deals with intuition. So intuition is telling me right now, the word to pick is pessimistic. Now, I'm saying it's intuitive because it's just how I'm processing this at the moment. Based on my interactions, based on the low I style, based on it dropping down, I'm going to go with pessimistic. I could be right. I could be wrong. And as long as I label it as intuition, then I can be flexible and not fixed on it later on. I will test my intuition with my prospect and then I'll get feedback. So they're the two words that I'm going to choose. So when I look at this now, what I would say is that when it comes to dealing with people and contacts, our client here is becoming more pessimistic, not trusting others. And when I look at the S style, I would say that he's attempting to be more patient. Remember I said before, there's a lot more energy going in there. He's slowing down, looking for more stability. 
So I'm going to combine these two words together. Right now, approaching people in contact with pessimism and attempting to stabilize the environment by being patient. Now, if I chunked up on this, pessimistic, then I'd say, is right now he can't trust others for some reason. He can't trust others. Maybe it's he can't trust what people are saying. Maybe there's somebody in the environment that he just can't trust. And I want to figure out who that is. Also, when it comes to being patient, one thing we know about the S style is they feel that time will solve the problem. So as I combine these, my mind read is going to say that this person can't trust others. So what they're going to do, they're just going to wait it out. They're going to wait, they're going to wait, they're going to wait. Maybe they can't trust the government. Maybe they can't trust their leader. Maybe they can't trust their family. Maybe they can't trust their friends. Maybe they can't trust their advisors. Maybe they can't trust the media. Maybe they can't trust the internet and what people are saying. So at the moment, my mind read is that they can't trust others. So what they're going to do, they're going to slow down. Instead of exploring risk, they're just going to be patient and they're just going to start to wait it out. They're going to use time to try to solve their problems. But as we know, the world moves fast and this style is going to be left behind. Are you with me so far? Now, these are the things that should be happening inside of your mind as you start to have case studies, as you start to work with many different people, as you start to link things together as you start to see what could I say there <laughs> as you can start to connect the dots once you start to do that once you put the jigsaw puzzle together it'll all make sense so I've had a look at their report I've made some mind reads I've made some assumptions and now I've formulated my questions so Safwan I trust that you're listening and Safwan, these are some questions that I want you to reflect on and I want you to share your insights below. So my first question that I'm going to ask my client is, what does patient mean to you? So Safwan, in the chat box, after you've watched this, I want you to tell me, what does patient mean to you? Secondly, after your definition, I want you to tell me, how is this patience helping or hurting you? So you've got your definition. You're going to tell me what patience means to you. And then I want you to tell me specifically how this patience is either helping or hurting you. Okay, they're the first two questions. The third question is going to be this. What is causing you to move away from being stable to patient. So when we have a look at the S style descriptor here, on your natural style, the descriptive word is stable. And over here, the descriptive word for the adapted style is patient. So in the past, you were more stable, but now you're attempting to become more patient. So what is causing you to move away from being stable to being patient? And I want you to tell me what's happening. Once you've done that, I want you to answer the next question. Is your pessimistic approach to people and contacts helping or hurting you? Remember before I said the descriptive word here for your low I style is pessimistic. So is your pessimistic approach to people and contacts helping or hurting you? And... I want you to give me an example and tell me why. Okay, excellent. And then finally, are you seeking help? Are you seeking help? Are you asking people for help? And are you really doing it? See, joining a course, joining a program, reading a book, listening to a class, that's a form of showing up. But are you actually asking for help? Are you asking people to support you? 
And are you doing it in a way that people actually understand? Because by showing up, it does not presuppose that you're actually asking for help. How many people have you actually picked up the telephone and said, I need help? How many people have you messaged on social media and in no uncertain terms have said, I need help? How many people have you emailed and said, I need help? How many of your family and friends have you said to, I need help? Because I think with this pessimistic approach, you might be doing a lot of things that look like help, but you may not be really asking for help. So they're your questions. And these are the exact questions I'd be asking my clients in a coaching session. Did you enjoy that? So we're 20 minutes into the training. And what most people do now is they drift off. They watch the next video on Facebook. They watch the next video on YouTube. They go to my next training video. And they actually don't stop, pause, and think. Now, the people who just watch the next video and don't stop, pause, and think, they're going to be the first people to screw up in the future. Because for you to be able to learn something new, you've actually got to stop. You've got to be able to process it. You've got to be able to think, how can I use this new information? How can I use this with my customers, my clients? How can I use it with myself? So I want you to stop, pause, and think. And I want you to leave me a comment in the comment section below and tell me, as a result of watching this video, what have you learned and what are you going to do differently as a result of what you've learned? Now, the ones who leave an insight, you'll be the next one to succeed. The ones who don't, then what's going to happen? You're going to face this problem in the future and you'll make another mistake. So don't make another mistake. Get it right now. Stop, pause and think. Have a wonderful day.